One week to the 2020-2021 school year, the back-to-school fever grips school authorities and parents. The enrollment in institutions, the purchase of school items and the friends in bookshops where 80% of manuals are available constitute a school resumption package. Bamboo, the evergreen perennial flowering plants with a better physical performance and eco-friendly nature is picked over material for the construction of houses. The marvels of bamboo were presented in this newscast. The Cameroon Football Federation and the Professional Football League called to resolve their discord and avoid inflicting disgrace on the country's enviable football whose local championship for 2020-2021 is yet to kick off three months before the African Nations Championship in Cameroon. Good evening. Those were the headlines of the 7.30 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. The new school year is a week away and education officials, just like parents, are engaged in preparations that are gathering steam. While the pedagogic week is ongoing, some parents are seeking admissions for their offspring who have been successful in official examinations or opting for a switch in institutions. Cynthia Saptala paints the back-to-school picture in the nation's capital, Yaoundé. <laughs> That's the response now given to parents still on the hunt for schools one week to the D-Day. In this government school, authorities here say cleaning is the primary activity now done to receive students Monday, October 5th. We are doing total cleaning of all classrooms and washing of benches because after this we are going to proceed with disinfection. We have already done class distribution and we have to proceed to rename the classes. For those who've completed registration procedures, the parents were seen in bookshops in town purchasing learning materials. There are some textbooks that are not available yet. They say the, the parents that came earlier bought already. In front of banks, queues of parents waiting with the hope of obtaining their monthly paychecks and possibly a loan. I'm still struggling to take a loan, school fee loan, so that I can provide the needs of my children to go back to school. With the effervescence gradually gaining steam in the capital city, 2020-2021 school year now seems to be a reality. It's back to school during a pandemic. The 2020-2021 school year will be characterized by special measures taken by the ministries in charge of education to stall the spread of the coronavirus. In the secondary education sector, a ministerial order prescribes a two-shift system in order to limit the number of learners per class to 50. Gerard Nanji Eyambe caught up with some school heads to find out how the new regulation will be implemented. Here's his report. Although the coronavirus is here, the right to education must be respected, reason why the two-shift system of studies has been agreed on. The first week, the first cycle will come morning, and the second week, the, second, the first cycle will come afternoon, while the second cycle comes in the morning. And in the morning, students are going to be received at the two entrances. And uh, in the afternoon, exit is going to be at the entrance at Nkol Messings. The pedagogic dispensation has also been altered. Timetables have been structured such that we have a break at 10 a.m. to 10.20. And in the afternoon, from 3 p.m. to 3.20. All the teachers are abreast. They know when they are coming to school. As time goes on, we're going to see how to, to structure uh, our timetable. However, this might not be applicable to all institutions of learning. It will depend on the total number of enrolled learners in each school. 
At the elementary level, given the age of pupils, respecting COVID-19 barrier measures will be burdensome. Basic education officials have been racking brains on how to get pupils who are yet to understand what the deadly virus is all about stay free from infections. As Alice Mbe reports, their safety will mainly rest on the shoulders of parents and teachers while at school. In this state-owned primary school at the Mokolo neighborhood in Yawunde, School authorities say they are making arrangements to implement the options of two study shifts. We are proposing to organize the studies in shifts, that is, to teach in groups. The first group from Monday to Wednesday, and the second group takes over from Thursday to Saturday, or to teach the first group of pupils from 7 a.m. to 12 a.m., and the second group from 1 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. every day. We have 50 to 60 children in each class and two per desk. Some teachers will work in the morning, while others work in the afternoon. The central government English primary school on its part has the required infrastructures and is therefore not directly affected by the set measures. All the classes are below 50. We have just made some new benches to make sure that the sitting position of the children will be respected. While waiting for the ministries to okay the options proposed by the different schools, hygiene and barrier measures are well on course in these schools to bar the way for the COVID-19. While the school authorities are summoned to contest the coronavirus, 13,000 primary schools across the nation will each receive three essential textbooks free of charge this school year. At a press briefing in Yaoundé today, Basic Education Minister Professor Laurent Sege Tudingwa revealed that the donation comprises the English, French and Mathematics course books for classes 1 and 2. Rahana Tosali reports that it will increase the average textbook ownership ratio in the country. It is good news for the basic education family. 13,000 public primary schools in the country will each receive three essential textbooks free of charge for the upcoming school year. The main aim is to develop a new national textbook policy and to distribute three essential books to all public primary schools free of charge. The textbooks include a French course book, an English course book, mathematics course book and will be distributed to classes one and two of both the English and French subsystems of education. The Ministry of Basic Education will distribute with its own internal resources two other books, complementary textbooks for the same classes in education priority areas. The objective, increase the average textbook ownership ratio from one textbook for 12 peoples to one textbook for two peoples, with each classroom being entitled to a total of five textbooks. Minister Laurent Serge Etindingua of Basic Education has reassured that distribution will begin on September 30, 2020, as the books provided with funds from the World Bank are already in stock. The school resumption buzz is yet to be felt in some parts of Douala's bookshop owners hold that in spite of the availability of 80% of school manuals, parents are yet to make purchases. They blame the low turnout on the coronavirus pandemic and the uncertainty that grips inhabitants. Roslyn Forsa walks us through some bookshops in Douala for an eyewitness account. At this time in previous years, many bookshop owners in Douala complained of the non-availability of school manuals. This time around, the complaints have changed. One week to school reopening, bookshop owners say stocks are ready, they are just waiting for customers. Textbooks and the other school curricular manual, most of the anglophone subsystem, the books are available at 99%. The anglophone subsystems, only some, some few books are still to come. To them, the timid turnout of parents to purchase school books for their kids can be attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic. Parents are coming so timidly. However, the few parents who visit bookshops one week to the start of school are happy that school manuals for their kids are available. The major problem now remains what is needed for them to have the books, and that is money. In the North region, the back-to-school frenzy is building up rapidly. Registration of old and new students is going on unstirred in schools as school administrations explain the new dispensation. In markets and bookshops, stationery is purchased, while tailoring workshops and travel agencies have a bunch of customers to attend to. Vanessa Snamong reports on the back-to-school fever 
in the north. Russia is felt in almost all domains related to school resumption in this part of the country. Schools in the region's capital, for instance, are into final touches. Concerning admission, it is a little slow. We have everything to counter the COVID-19. The company has already set. I have already started registration. Roads leading to the Gara main market are congested and parents crowd the shops. I came to this shop to pick a few things that are still remaining, like uniforms. Par à passé, un peu lent. Business is going on though a little slow. I have stocked my shop with different kinds of books. Tailors too are overwhelmed as they worry about delivering school uniforms on time. As the countdown to October 5 narrows, Members of the National Assembly have been reaching out to pupils and students in the Northwest region who will be hitting the roads to school on October 5. An example is the CPDM elected representative for Tubaba Food Constituency, Honorable Oliver Ago, who has been providing anti COVID 19 kids and didactic material. Karin Tosam tells us more. These school attending children, including the internally displaced from Bambui, Bambali and Babanki villages, have not seen the four walls of a classroom for close to four years now. The children that turned out to receive school materials, accompanied by their parents, say they are eagerly looking forward to making their lives better by returning to the classrooms. I'm very happy what I'm going to Traditional rulers in the area, like the Fon of Bambui, say they have been mobilizing their communities for an effective start of classes. We have had meetings with the quarterheads and the schools. The, the campuses are cleaned up and waiting for the beginning of the school year. We need not emphasize the importance of education. You can bear with me that for the four years that schools have not gone into work. You can understand what we have gone through. The divisional officer of Tuba, Alim Garga, reassured the people that government has taken security measures to ensure the safety of school attending children in the subdivision. Away from the back-to-school preparation, 44% of ongoing projects financed by the African Development Bank and its partners in Cameroon have been executed satisfactorily. The figure was disclosed at the 46th quarterly review meeting in Kribi, chaired by the Subdirector for Regional Cooperation, Valentin La Couto. Joyce Kimbi Fuwaju reports that the deplorable state of 14% of the projects was strongly denounced. The portfolio of projects financed by the African Development Bank and its partners in Cameroon count 31 ongoing projects costing 1,487.47 billion CFA francs. Its performance and hurdles opened the deliberations. We have 44% uh, of project who is satisfied. Perhaps we have 42% uh, of project of the portfolio who have uh, many problems of execution. The road sector had the lion's share of the Cameroon ADB quarterly review of projects. We have uh, Kumba Monfe, we have Batinga Yoko, we have uh, Yaoundé Bafusan Babadjou, uh, we have Don Zambi Kribi, uh, and we have Bogopus in the far, far north. To credit their facts and figures, a field trip to one of the road project sites was undertaken by the participants, precisely to the Grand Zambi Kribi Road on the construction. As announced in our top stories in our running series tonight, we spotlight the gradual shift to bamboo for the construction of houses. This is as a result of affirmations that bamboo has a better physical performance than most alternative building material like wood and steel. In a country like Cameroon opting for eco-friendly building material, bamboo is a perfect pick. Beatrice Law Samba now reports on its marvels. The wheel has been set rolling for bamboo now more visible in building sites where it is used for scaffolding and flooring, an elegant alternative to steel, concrete and wood. When compared to other materials like steel, iron, uh, wood, bamboo is extremely light, 
in terms of weight, when you look at bamboo flooring, it is simply stunning in terms of physical beauty. The crush for bamboo as key material in housing was born from a desire to choose eco-sound building techniques. Stronger than steel, the traditional building material used for thousands of years now is known to provide resilience in times of disaster. The more reason for the gradual shift to bamboo. We have seen a story buildings in places like Hong Kong where they have been able to use bamboo scaffolding up to 17 floors. And to be able to reach this level, we need to standardize the process of building with bamboo. The future looks green for this fastest growing plant in Cameroon, which country boasts of about 1.2 million hectares of natural bamboo and nurses dreams of not only building houses but livelihoods from bamboo combs. And now on to youth empowerment. Some 300 young people resident in Mifi Division of the West Region have been trained on bee farming. The training was triggered and sponsored by an elite of the area. Prime Ministers at the Secretary General at the Prime Minister's Office, Professor Pascal Ngihe Kante. As we hear these reports by Ngu Henry Tesambe. The three-day training was carried out in Kwa and in Dumdi in the Bafusam 3 subdivision. The over 300 youths were trained in bee farming. We are satisfied because uh, students acquire everything that we prepare for them. For example, students, are, now they know what is beekeeping. They can go and create their apiary, and uh, after the apiary, they know how to do monitoring of their apiary. The trainees are expected to group themselves into common initiative groups so as to benefit from support from the government through the Livestock Development Project, PRODEL. They have expressed gratitude to Minister Paskangie Kanti for the initiative which will help them generate revenue and alleviate poverty. And to health, a nationwide campaign to vaccinate against rabies has begun today on the occasion of the 14th International Day Against Rabies. It is celebrated on the theme, Let's Collaborate and Eliminate Rabies. The campaign was launched by the Minister of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries, Dr. Tiger. A veterinary doctor, Dr. Georges Mveng, now puts the campaign into context. Take a listen. More than 98% of the rabies cases are due to pets. So we want to vaccinate all those animals that are in our houses, uh, dogs, cats, uh, primates. And we want people all around Cameroon, uh, all around the central region to come and vaccinate their animals. The campaign is nationwide. The Ministry of Livestock, Fisheries and Animals Industry has uh, instructed all the regional delegation to go on with the vaccination campaign on this special day. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. COVID-19 news, there are over 800 active cases of the coronavirus in Cameroon and with the resumption of the school year around the corner, Cameroonians need to stay vigilant to avoid an increase in infections. Although health experts acknowledge physical distancing may be hard to abide by, the wearing of face masks and the frequent use of hand sanitizers or hand washing are fundamental. Baldwin Sama is at the Public Health Emergency Operations Centre with his guest Dr. Joseph Fokam to explain how this should be done. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kiman. Welcome. The non-respect for the different barrier measures outlined by the government of Cameroon against COVID-19 is very disturbing. And that's why public health experts are looking forward to discouraging this practice in the society. With our guest tonight, Dr. Joseph Fokam, we look at what they need to know. I'm talking about Cameroonians as concerns the non-respect for these uh, outlined barrier measures. measures. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, Marvin. What do Cameroonians need to know as far as uh, non the non-respect for these outlined measures by the government to stop the spread of COVID-19? Effectively, Bandi, what we are seeing these days actually when doing this massive screening 
among people who have no symptom, we still have about 6% of positivity rate. These are people who have the virus, they don't know they have it, and they keep on now transmitting the virus in our community. And what we have also seen in our context, actually, cases of reinfection is possible. So being infected on the second round is very possible. And that said, antibody that we develop against this COVID-19 might not be protective for a long run. So for this reason, we believe it is very important now to get back people into the practice of barrier measures, especially because over the last weekend, we have been seeing new cases of clusters of transmission among the same family. And this, for us, is very worrying because we may be in Cameroon we are going towards a second wave already. And finally, Doctor, uh, what are some of these uh, uncommon ways through which the virus can easily be transmitted that Cameroonians are, are not aware of? Yes, as we highly mentioned, so many people who are positive are purely asymptomatic. And these are people who may carry the virus in their noses and in their throat. They may leave them on surfaces and also on tables in the house. And you getting in after or working in any environment where there is a, an AC, you may easily have the virus sustained on the air for some more time and you get infected unknowingly. So the major issue for us, you are positive or not, make sure you should keep practicing the barrier measures because coronavirus is not yet out of Cameroon. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Fokan. The take-home message from here tonight is that if you were tested before and you recovered from a, a coronavirus, it is still possible for you to get uh, reinfected with the virus. We must stop a possibility of us moving towards a second wave of the spread of the COVID-19 in Cameroon by respecting the barrier measures. Back to you, Esther Kima. Thanks very much, Borden Summer. With the back to school period fast approaching, there will be lots of movement, and so we need to stay conscious. A consignment of medical equipment worth 175 million TV friends has been offered to the government of Cameroon. The donation is from the Energy of Cameroon, NAO, and it is intended to support the coronavirus repose strategy as well as the management of other diseases. A Buda Ekanu report on the events presided over by the Minister of Public Health. Madawuda Malashi. The medical equipment worth 175 million CFL francs offered to the government by Enio Cameroon include pulse oximeters, resuscitation and intensive care ventilators, as well as parametric monitors, amongst others. I'm very proud to hand over this gift to the Ministry of Health of Cameroon. This donation will help the country to fight against this COVID-19 virus. This equipment will also help the government of Cameroon to fight other diseases once the pandemic is finished. While receiving the gift in Yaoundé, the Minister of Public Health, Manaoda Malashi, expressed gratitude to Inyo Cameroon for their largesse, which is going to boost the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The gesture by the company in charge of the distribution of energy falls within the framework of its corporate social responsibility. As a gesture is partnership on the one hand between NEO, which is demonstrating corporate social responsibility. So as partners within the community, they have today demonstrated their commitment to that community in which they work, in which they prosper, in which they live, um, but also the professionalism that they've shown the way way in which they have managed within their own team to maintain the critical national infrastructure. The frontline health workers in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic have promised to use the gifts judiciously. This is an occasion for us to say thank you very much for the annual team for their support. And as we know, when we say thank you, we need, we are waiting again. So continue to be with us. In the days ahead, a new Cameroon will also extend a hand of solidarity to the 10 district councils hosting sensitive electricity generation sites. In a series on the major national dialogue, we focus on the reconstruction of the Southwest region. The managements of the Cameroon Development Corporation, CDC and PAMOL, have expressed gratitude to the head of state, Paul Beer, for the financial assistance that have saved the institutions from a closure. Henry Mekola reports on some of the actions taken so far that have revived production in these companies.
For the past four years, CDC and Pamol have been going through tough times. We would require close to 8.8 .8 billion francs to take off. After we carry out the value assessment of Ilwani on you, um, if we take the plantation that we are out somewhere around 68 billion francs. In their plight, the authorities of both corporations say that from time to time, the government has been coming to their aid. The factory is still working, though timidly. We are able to have had a thousand tons of uh, oil milled in Dian. We are active in the palm oil sector in some estates and we are producing palm oil. We have been able to produce some rubber, very small, 400 hectares of banana, which we envisage should come into production in the next three to four months. During their recent board meeting, the chair of CDC, Mr. Benjamin Itwe, emphasized that if CDC is even managing to function today, it is thanks to the head of state, Paul Bia, who has shown a lot of concern for the corporation. That is why the drama manager of CDC, Franklin Goninjie, just like the drama manager of Pamol, Chief Mekanya Charles Okon, have not stopped expecting that once again, the head of state will come to their help. In sports, three months to the start of the 2021 African Nations Championship, Cameroon's Football Championship for the 2020-2021 football season is yet to begin. One of the reasons is the discord between the Cameroon Football Federation and the Professional Football League. It is imperative that both parties respect the verdict of the Court of Arbitration for Sports in order to stop the country's football from drowning. Baldwin Sama tells us how these can be averted. The unending tussle between the Professional Football League and the Cameroon Football Federation delaying a possible resumption of football activities, football analysts insist government recommendations and a decision by the Court of Arbitration for Sports must be respected by both parties. Both parties should first show a little bit of good faith, you know, after uh, Cassie's decision to reinstate the Professional League body, Mr. Semenge said he was going in for appeasement, uh, uh, Food equally agreed. The minister has said everything. He has given the way to, to start playing football again. Fighting every day on the court is not what we, what we want. Others believe Fika Food must respect the law. Fika Food has to strictly respect all the decisions. They must implement everything that has been decided. An ad hoc committee should be set in place between LFPC and FECAFOOT in order to lay down the basis on which the league can resume. There is every need for our championships to kick off, thus a need to see an end to the persistent tussle between FECAFOOT and the Professional Football League. The technical accessories offered to the sports community by the head of state, His Excellency Paul Beer, have been described as timely. The accession was made by the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Professor Narcisse Molekombi, today during an exclusive interview with CRTV. Romeo Nkenyu reports that it is an added value to Cameron's efforts to host international competitions. The sport family in Cameroon is now in possession of 80 different collections of animation equipment amongst which a stage, audio and video mixers plus cameras. The gift from the head of state is described timely by sport minister. The head of state is here by demonstrating to the sports community and Cameroon that he is a man of his world. The accessories will first be used during the opening and closing ceremonies of the African Nations Championship Shan next year and later on during the 2022 AFCON tournament. These equipments of uh, up-to-date uh, technology have once again placed Cameroon ahead of other countries. On the national scene, they will also be used during the National Challenge Cup finals and other national crowd pulling events. Professor Narcisse Molekombi has reiterated. He has once more called on users of the technological equipment to jealously preserve them as they are now a national patrimony. 
And that report brings us to the end of the 7th of news in which you mainly heard that one week to the 2020-2021 school year, the back to school fever has gripped school authorities and parents. The enrollment institutions, the purchase of school items and the frenzy in bookshops where 80% of manuals are available constituted a school resumption package. Today, more news comes up at 8.30 p.m. with Romeo Atrice. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Cut willing, stay tuned to our programs on the CRTV and stay safe from the coronavirus. Good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. info. Si Artivinius, ici, toute l'info.